Hi, in this video I will be showing how you can generate animations with the Pixel app. So first off, we open the animation tool and we select a reference image, in this case uh, the first frame in the animation. Then we have a character description that fits our generation and then um, make sure we have a view and direction correct and then we click generate. Uh, don't be afraid of retrying if you are not happy with the results. Sometimes it does better, sometimes it's, it, yeah, it doesn't go that well. So what I like to do is I keep the frames that I do like and uh, remove any frames that I am not that happy with. In this case I'm just gonna touch up the frames a bit before uh, generating uh, more. So once uh, I'm happy with the, all the corrections it's time to generate. In this case I will use the uh, three frames I generated previously as uh, guidance for the model so it will generate one more frame for me uh, this is very useful for extending animations uh, because the model can see the previous frames and kinda get an idea of what's happening and then can generate the next frame in the animation um, it can be a bit hard to know if it's better to uh, edit yourself or use the models for uh, fixing things up. I think it depends a bit on how comfortable you are as an artist. Personally I might uh, edit too much by hand and sometimes uh, it would be better for me to just use the model. So it, it can be a bit hard to get a good feeling for when you should uh, generate more or if you should uh, just do it by hand. But there are like in painting and stuff that you could use if there are just certain parts you want to edit and improve. So you can always try that out and uh, see, see if it works or not. Now I'm just gonna do some uh, touch-ups and move the frames around a bit because I think they looks better in a different order and uh, I'm done with my walking animation. Alright, now it's time to uh, create some attack animations. So what I'm trying out here is that I am generating the, uh, the movement of the character separately from the, uh, the special effects. So first I'm gonna make like a throwing animation and then I will be using init image and in painting to add my fireball afterwards. So here, very similar to what I did with uh, the walking animation, I'm gonna first generate the uh, pretty good like base movement. So something I like to recommend is if you, for example, generated a walk animation and the legs are pretty nice. So in this case, like ah, oh, the the feet aren't perfect. So what I'm gonna do is. I will re reuse the, uh, the, f the feet from the walking animation and just copy paste them over to the uh, throwing animation to make it look a little bit better just to clean it up a bit and then I'm just gonna move that hand that it's slightly out of, out of place and because I think it should be further forward instead now because I'm not the greatest artist in the world, I'm just gonna take some time here and uh, make sure everything looks alright. Alright, it's time to uh, create the fireball. So first I'm just gonna in-paint a bit where the uh, fireball is gonna be. Then I will add a uh, yellow color underneath the in painting 
just to uh, give the model an idea of what I want the uh, or where I want the fireball to be. So because I'm using in penny, the uh, model can only edit where the uh, where I have in painted. So uh, there's no no danger for it for it to edit the actual character and just the uh, the fireball itself. I want to make sure that your uh, your position is correct with the frames. You can see in the UI where the uh, characters are, so it matches up. Now with all the generations uh, done, I'm just gonna quickly copy paste from uh, previous generations to fix any artifacts that the model created and just make the animation look a lot cleaner. Uh, for my second animation, I will do it pretty much the same way. I'm gonna start off this time uh, creating the special effects so uh, like a flame wave I'm thinking and then afterwards I will uh, generate the uh, mo the movement for the animation uh, you don't have to do it this way I just find it to be uh, pretty good uh, you can also just try to generate the whole attack animation at once this gives a bit more control though, which is good. Uh, something that's good to remember when you're in painting, in paint in the in painting layer. Uh, and um, for like description, uh, when you're doing special effects, I highly recommend adding attack to the animation because the model will then know from. Uh, uh, I guess the training data that uh, attack usually has uh, special effects. Now for the character movement, I'm just gonna generate a uh, punching animation. Uh, so here, I kind of only like two of the frames, the final one and the first one. So what I will do here is, I will remove the frames in between and add empty frames. And then I will uh, interpolate between the first and the last frame to uh, see if I can get some uh, continuous movement between these frames. When doing this, it's good to uh, play around a bit in the advanced settings where you can find a uh, number of frames and personally then I would recommend increasing that this will help the model know that it shouldn't start cycling back and instead create uh, the frames in between thank you for watching Remember to subscribe if you haven't, so you don't miss any future videos. Feel free to comment if you have any questions. Uh, for my next video, I will do one on our new map tile tool, which will be quite exciting, because it's quite a lot better, so hopefully we will get some really cool results. But yeah, I will see you next time.